A lot has been said and written in the past few months about Virgin Trains East Coast. A lot of it has been misinformed and much of it has been politically motivated. Frankly, a lot of misleading comment from people in positions from whom we all have a right to expect better. Most importantly, what has been ignored is the real story of what Stagecoach, Virgin and the railway itself have delivered for our passengers, our employees and the national and regional economy. We have a great team of people at Virgin Trains East Coast and I'm incredibly proud of what they've delivered under our £140 million transformation programme. More investment, a completely refurbished train fleet, more services to more locations, better onboard journeys with first-class catering, on-demand entertainment, a new website and a smartphone app, and the creation of 300 new jobs, all at the same time as preparing the business for the introduction of 65 new state-of-the-art high-speed Azuma trains in the next two years that will revolutionise rail travel on the East Coast main line. The result? More passengers abandoning cars and planes to travel by rail and 92% customer satisfaction, the highest of any operator on the UK's franchised rail network. We've also delivered huge premium payments to the taxpayer for the privilege of running the service, more than £800 million. That's money government can reinvest in the railway and other vital public services like schools and hospitals. And in all of these measures, we have delivered far more than was ever the case when the East Coast route was operated in the public sector. When private companies deliver public services, it is absolutely right that they meet the obligations in their contract. All parties to contract should do that. The reality is that we've neither walked away from the East Coast franchise nor have we received or asked for any special treatment. Stagecoach has run trains on behalf of the government for the past 21 years. We take that responsibility very seriously. And we've made every route we've run better than it was before, providing better services for passengers and significantly enhancing the value of the railway for taxpayers. Our partnership with Virgin has also transformed services on Britain's other great flagship route, the West Coast Main Line, with state-of-the-art trains, great customer service and record travel by rail. Commercial contracts, of course, involve rights and responsibilities, risk and reward. The government rigorously tested our plans and financial assumptions before awarding us the East Coast contract. It decided we offered a high-quality and realistic bid. Indeed, I was personally told at the time it was the highest quality bid they had ever seen. That bid was based on the information and trends available at the time, including economic forecasts used by government. But while passengers and taxpayers have benefited hugely from our management of the East Coast Railway, an unprecedented combination of circumstances mean our financial plans have not worked out. There are many reasons for that. We've had the impact of a weak economy and huge political uncertainty. On the railway itself, We've suffered from sustained unreliability of the track and signalling our trains use. And across the UK rail network, growth rates in the past two years have been amongst the lowest in two decades. A lot has been out of our control. But the bottom line is that, in hindsight, we got our forecast for passenger growth wrong and our business has lost close to £200 million from the contract. We're sorry for the impact this has had on our investors who received no dividends from Virgin Trains East Coast and have seen a significant fall in the value of their investment. That is our responsibility. But what's also clear is that our people and our company have acted professionally and with complete integrity. We have met in full our obligations to fund the franchise, even in challenging times. We've also subsidised the East Coast business, despite knowing there were going to be significant delays through no fault of our own, to vital track improvements that we need to deliver extra services and future payments to the taxpayer. Under our contract, we have an insurance policy funded directly by Stagecoach and Virgin to help support the business when it doesn't meet its financial plan. Like normal insurance policies, it has a limit. In this case, that limit is £165 million. It was the government's choice to have a contract where it was financially responsible after that limit was reached and the government knew the risks it was accepting. 
We will always stick by our customers and work hard to make a successful railway for the benefit of everyone in our country. That's why in East Coast we will continue to work with government to help deliver its plans for the future. The government's plans include a new competitively tendered East Coast Partnership franchise on the route from 2020. And of course, between now and then and beyond, the franchise will still deliver significant payments and value to the taxpayer, whoever wins the competition. In the meantime, with our expertise, we can deliver the new Azuma trains from later this year. We can protect investment on the route for our customers and local communities. And we can help deliver the vision we share with government of a more joined up railway. It's a tribute to our staff and our management team that despite the political noise and rightly being concerned about their personal future, they've kept 100% focus on our customers. That's real commitment the real story of Virgin Trains East Coast. And it's why, instead of political point scoring, everyone should support the continued transformation of this great railway.